Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday morning. Hopefully, we have all had a great start to our weekend so far. And as we kind of begin to wind things down, we've got a pretty active day ahead for a lot of Americans uh, in the severe weather department. So we're going to talk a lot about that today. We're also going to touch on what to expect in the week ahead. And for some of us, it is going to be quite a rainy week. So definitely need to watch out for that. Um, but, you know, this time of the year, the rain is nice because it doesn't take many days of dry weather and sun to really dry out those plants. Uh, so, you know, we could definitely use the rain for some of us who have had quite the bit of a uh, dry stretch. So uh, definitely going to talk about all of that today. Also, um, again, just want to say thank you for joining me today. And, you know, it means a lot to me, especially on a Sunday morning when I know we all kind of might be a little busy or just trying to relax. It does really mean a lot to me that you uh, take some time out of your day to watch this video. Uh, and also, of course, if there are any questions I don't answer or if you just have any suggestions or anything like that, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, I make sure to read all of the comments all of the time. So uh, with that said, I guess we can go ahead and start talking about the weather and uh, really kind of break down what we're expecting this week. So satellite imagery has a pretty defined low pressure system. And honestly, if you were to put this on a textbook page and ask what month of the year is it, I would probably guess April. Uh, because this is, you know, this looks like quite the severe weather uh, kind of event here. Very strong low pressure here, very defined front here uh, with showers and storms being triggered out in front of it and a nice, you know, kind of uh, warm sector here to work with. So definitely going to have a pretty active day in the severe weather department. And I really do think the main threats today will likely be uh, damaging wind, hail, but also I think we'll get a couple tornadoes today as well. Definitely can't rule that out. Now, looking at our radar here, all dry everywhere outside of this big low pressure system. So, uh, again, a lot of places it is raining here, especially kind of uh, to this, you know, northern tier of this low pressure, this kind of northern band here, and then also this um, kind of part of the front here also getting some rain today. Now, where we're going to have the biggest severe weather threat is going to be kind of in between these two, where we get this kind of dry area or this dry slot in between those two, and that is going to allow the atmosphere to kind of rejuvenate a little bit, gain some instability this afternoon, and with that fire off some pretty strong storms this evening. So definitely going to watch that. But uh, this morning, if you're commuting to church, you know, we've got a pretty rainy morning. Definitely going to want to grab the umbrella uh, or on the way back from church, depending on when you're watching this. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of places like Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Charlotte, uh, Knoxville, up even towards Cincinnati and Indianapolis dealing with that rain this morning. And, of course, even, you know, another shield of rain to the north as well. But luckily, the severe weather threat will definitely be to kind of uh, the south here towards this area today. And uh, kind of taking a look at that map, we actually have an enhanced risk today. So this is... Um, you know, this is when everything's kind of start to become a pretty big deal. Once you pass slight, that's when, uh, you know, we get, you know, into kind of more of the dangerous category. And this is a really big enhanced risk, which tells me two things. Uh, one, there's going to be a lot of people impacted. Two, the Storm Prediction Center, they're leaving some room to, you know, put in a moderate um, risk here if things do go more downhill today. So uh, kind of the big target cities today, Nashville, uh, back down towards Atlanta, Birmingham, over towards northern Mississippi, Memphis, Knoxville, uh, and then, you know, even places further outside of there from kind of Greenville, uh, back down towards, you know, sections of southern Georgia through Macon, uh, even down towards the Mobile area, Jackson, Mississippi, even back towards Little Rock having the chance of those strong storms. But uh, really, that severe weather threat is through this entire area. So, you know, there's... Uh, uh, there are millions of Americans who are under the severe weather threat today, but again, the biggest area that is going to see the most severe weather is kind of in this orange circle, uh, followed by that yellow circle. Now, as we go into tomorrow, it will not be over. We're going to have another area of severe weather. We have a marginal risk uh, spanning much of the southeastern coastline and the Gulf of Mexico coastline with, um, you know, some areas of slight risk also thrown in there here through sections of Texas kind of to the west there of Dallas-Fort Worth and also down here into southern Alabama and Mississippi and even sections of Louisiana here also having that slight risk tomorrow. And we'll take a look as to why we have that slight risk tomorrow uh, here in a minute whenever we analyze the models. Now, as we go into Tuesday, another day of severe weather for much of the same areas here into the southern tier of the country from Dallas-Fort Worth all the way over to Birmingham, having that shot of some strong to severe storms on our Tuesday as well. And I would expect this to go into Wednesday as well, even though we don't have a map yet for Wednesday. I would expect another kind of area here, uh, kind of through here, to have another shot of severe storms on Wednesday as well. 
All right, so taking a look at today's severe weather threat uh, with our high resolution rapid refresh model. Love this model, love to use it. Um, again, you'll notice pretty well here, this is that northern bit of rain, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, here is that cold front. So as we kind of move this ahead through the day, uh, you'll notice that all this will kind of advance slowly to the east. And once we get into about 1, 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, this is when things are going to kind of really begin to get active. Now one, we're going to have some cells kind of form here just south of this boundary, and this is where we're going to have the highest tornado threat today. Uh, I really would not be surprised to see a couple tornado warnings here into much of Kentucky and kind of southern Indiana as well. So definitely watching for you folks there. Uh, otherwise, anywhere here kind of in this area has a chance of, you know, a brief tornado, but mainly strong damaging winds and large hail as well. So watching that. Now, as we bring this into this evening, uh, again, you'll really notice this kind of sector here of those strong storms really begins to fire up. And as the sun's going down, probably going to get quite the lightning show for a lot of us, as well as, again, some very strong wind and hail. Also, don't want to rule out uh, some strong storms here into the Carolinas as well with this section of, um, you know, storms this evening. Those could also become strong to severe. Now, as we go into the overnight hours, things are going to stay quite active now, once we pass midnight. Uh, I could, you know, still really see a lot of strong storms working their way on through. And once we really get into the overnight, we're going to have a big line of these strong storms with likely pretty frequent lightning as well as um, some, you know, strong gusty winds and maybe even a little bit of hail this evening as well. So definitely going to be watching that as we go into the overnight hours before that kind of sweeps on through. And tomorrow will be a nicer day for a lot of us here in the Ohio River Valley, but then that storm threat shifts further to the south down here into kind of this uh, southern bit of your screen. Now kind of zooming this out into more just a east view in general, I'm going to move this ahead into tomorrow afternoon. Um, so once we get into about kind of, we'll go to 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, so you'll notice here's that front very defined. And again, anywhere along this front here, kind of in here, uh, we're going to have that chance of some of those stronger storms to fire up tomorrow afternoon. That's why we have such a large uh, risk area tomorrow. So uh, once we kind of go into tomorrow afternoon, uh, you'll notice once we get towards the afternoon hours, we're going to get some of these storms to fire up uh, kind of along that front, anywhere from the um, really the mid-Atlantic through the southeast and even into um, sections of like the Gulf Coast. So we're going to be watching that definitely tomorrow. Again, same threats for tomorrow. I think less of a tornado threat tomorrow compared to today, but nonetheless, that threat still exists. So just to name some cities here, Raleigh, I think has got a good chance of some strong storms tomorrow afternoon, uh, kind of down towards Florence, South Carolina, Savannah, Charleston, and then even, of course, down here towards the Gulf states as well, uh, kind of through here, also has a pretty good chance of some strong storms tomorrow. Now, once we get through tomorrow and we get into Tuesday afternoon, uh, I'll set the stage for you. And I should also add, even if we're not seeing severe storms tomorrow, we're going to still see a pretty um, potent line of storms through the northeast tomorrow evening as well. So if you're in Pennsylvania, New York, uh, much of New England, expect some rain tomorrow evening. And again, could be gusty winds with that as well as that moves on through during the overnight hours of Monday into Tuesday morning. And as we get into, we'll move this to about... Uh, We'll do 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Again, you'll notice a pretty interesting setup here. Very strong low pressure just spinning away here over sections of the Great Lakes. And with that, still dealing with uh, kind of this line of showers and storms over New England. So definitely watching that. And sorry, I think I'm about to sneeze. So, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I could feel that sneeze coming for like 30 seconds. Anyway, um, back to the weather. Uh, so going into Tuesday morning and afternoon, Again, still watching out for this line of showers and storms uh, moving up through New England, but not much of a severe weather threat. The severe weather threat on Tuesday will be down here into the southern tier of the country. So where you notice kind of these waves of storms moving on through is where we're going to have um, that severe weather threat on Tuesday. So definitely watching for that. And again, you'll notice uh, that will move through much of Mississippi, Alabama, even Georgia during the day Tuesday. And um, that will then set the stage for much of the same on Wednesday. So, you know, as we bring this out and look at the Euro model on more of a national view, again, we're going to move this ahead into where we just left off on Tuesday afternoon. And uh, again, you'll notice still clearing the northeast here with that rain, as well as still scattered showers up through the Midwest on Tuesday. Um, but we have those severe storms further to the south. Now, once we get into Wednesday afternoon, 
Uh, you'll notice, again, a pretty big area here, I think, of uh, potentially some stronger storms. And this is mainly going to be because this low pressure finally begins to work its way back east again after kind of just spinning over the Great Lakes for a little bit. So kind of anywhere in here is going to have that chance of severe weather on Wednesday, I think, but specifically really kind of down here into this uh, area right here. So definitely want to be watching that on Wednesday. Now the good news is, um, after that moves through, we do get you know a bit clearer for our Thursday afternoon. I think Thursday's much nicer, despite some scattered rain in the northeast and maybe even still kind of into the Gulf Coast. Um, but you know once we get into the Thursday Friday time frame, things should clear out a bit before maybe going into the following weekend, we get another kind of round of storms to move through sections of the east. So looking at the rainfall totals for the next seven days here again it is going to be very rainy for some of us especially down here into the southeast and kind of the reason for that is just going to be the way this low pressure is working so with it spinning away here uh, and you're getting kind of all of this flow behind it that's just going to uh, bring rounds of rain through the same kind of corridor so we're going to get you know multiple days of these storms and uh, you know that heavy rain adds up very quickly in fact the uh, weather prediction center here is going with uh, more than four inches of rain over the next week for places like Atlanta and Birmingham and you know plenty of surrounding areas as well and uh, again it's still gonna be quite rainy even into the northeast as well as we're dealing with that low pressure spinning away, bringing plenty of rain. So two to four inches of rain pretty likely there uh, through that kind of stretch as we go through the next week or so. Now, the good news with this is it will be a bit less muggy for a lot of us. So again, once we get this first you know cold front to pass on through today and tomorrow, we will get a bit of a break from the humidity uh, here into the east. You'll notice that does calm down a little bit, but we then likely are going to get a bit of a resurgence from the south here going into kind of the middle part of this work week. So as we move this ahead into Wednesday afternoon, again, you'll notice a pretty sharp boundary here that we're going to be working with. And this is where we're going to have that rain just because we're getting kind of a clash of air masses here. And that combined with rounds of storms uh, riding along that could definitely produce some um, you know, very heavy rainfall and also help to kind of let the atmosphere rotate a little bit. So this is why I think Wednesday we could have a pretty, you know, I don't want to say strong, but a noticeable tornado threat on Wednesday here kind of in this area of the southeast. So we'll definitely be watching that. Uh, and again, that's going to kind of hang around for a little bit, that general boundary uh, before, you know, going into the following weekend, we could, you know, get a mixed bag of things. But we'll talk about that another time. Another thing here are the temperatures. It is going to be, you know, pretty well below average for this time of year through much of the east this week, mainly just because of this low pressure continuing to spin away with all those clouds and scattered rain. Uh, in fact, Tuesday afternoon here, you know, <laughs> almost 25 degrees below what we should be because of the rain here through sections of the southeast and uh, through much of the Midwest as well. And again, this will hang around through just about all of this week going into uh, this is Thursday here. This is Friday, still below average for much of us in the east. And uh, same story this weekend, really, as well. So uh, one good thing about, I guess, all the rain is it, you know, keeps us away from all that summertime uh, kind of heat and humidity for a little bit longer. And this year has felt really nice, honestly, to start uh, summer. It hasn't really been that oppressive uh, for too long at least so that is definitely some good news again just want to thank you for joining me today and watching the video and of course if you have any questions feel free to ask me but with that said hope you have a great rest of your Sunday and I will see you all tomorrow